that was the first time I realized that transgender individuals aren't completely respected. Hey guys, it's Kirby. Welcome back to Pretty Unfiltered and happy Pride Month. Today, we're talking about what it's like to grow up transgender. 1.4 million people in the United States are transgender. So I figured I'd bring Jazz Jennings on the show to talk <laughs> about her upbringing. You guys know Jazz from her YouTube channel. She is the youngest person to be a national transgender figure. And you also know her from her show on TLC, I Am Jazz, which is premiering on June 27th and 28th. A two yes. night premiere, girl. Yes. Gotta spread it out, double nights. I love that. It's gonna be fun. So we're gonna answer a lot of your questions that you sent in about what it was like for Jazz growing up and uh, how you can be an ally for the transgender community. Thanks for joining. Of course, I'm glad to be here. Okay, so I feel like on YouTube, most people know what the term transgender means at this mm -hmm. point. It's like, where have you been if you don't know what this term yes. is, right? But I wanna ask you, what do you think are the biggest misconceptions people have about being transgender? Oh my God, there are so many different misconceptions that people have. I think one of the biggest ones is that people think it was a choice. They're like, oh, okay, so one day you decided to be a girl, right? And no, it's not a choice. This is just the way I am. I was born this way. And I mean, I don't know why people would choose such a hard life and like the struggles. I don't know how people could think that it's a decision we make overnight. It's just who we are as individuals. Other misconceptions people have is they think I was too young to transition. They don't understand. Mm on how a two-year-old could know what the difference is between a boy and a girl. Yep. And I guess they don't understand that two-year-olds really do have the concept of genders. You know, I gravitated towards dolls and dresses and that's what I associated with being female. Mm -hmm. And that's just who I was. That's such a great point. I see that all the time on Facebook when there is a conversation about being transgender in the comment section. It's like, well, they're too young to make that decision. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, do you even know that person? Yeah. And you know, it's not like I transitioned when I was two years old. Exactly. Like we saw that it wasn't a phase. It was, mm -hmm. you know, me, I was a girl. And then once I was five years old, I did officially transition once I had shown those traits for many years. Exactly. Do you get a lot of people that like confront you about that in person? A lot of people don't think that I'm really a girl. They're like, oh, so you have male genitals, so therefore you're a boy, or your chromosomes determine who you are, not your brain. And they don't understand how I could have been so defiant at an early age, I just said that, or my parents forced me wow. to dress up and be a girl because they wanted another uh, daughter. And I just don't understand all of these different you know, concepts that these people create in their minds. I think, you know, people are afraid of what they don't know or understand, and mm -hmm. clearly they don't understand what it means to be transgender, and they kind of deny that, you know, this is who I was from an early age. But you've been very vocal about, you know, being a transgender advocate since you were really young. You were on 2020 when you were six, right? Mm -hmm. And then later on, you were on the Rosie O'Donnell show. Yes. So what made you passionate? I feel like this is just a very common question, but I'm gonna ask anyways. What made you so passionate about putting your voice out there? So basically when I first told my story at the age of six, I was so young that I didn't really know what I was doing. I just thought I was gonna be on TV and I'm like, <laughs> wow, this is so interesting. Yeah. But then, you know, my parents told me about the impact that I was having on so many other kids like myself. They're like, look at all these other transgender children. You've, you've helped them become who they are just by sharing your story. And then once I knew that I was benefiting others by just being myself and putting my message out there, I realized that I had to continue doing this. And it was really a motivational factor seeing all of this positive feedback. Being young, do you remember the moment you realized, oh, I'm transgender? Like that term. It was just who I was right from the start. Yeah. Honestly, as soon as I could express myself, I said that I was a girl. I was, you know, two years old. My mom would say, you're such a good boy. And I would be like, no mama, good girl. Mm. And I heard, I first heard the word transgender when I was three years old. My parents took me to a specialist and I was diagnosed with what's now called gender dysphoria. It kind of allowed them to just realize that, you know, I can be a girl, I can be myself and this is acceptable. Wow. In a recent video, you talk about 10 things that we might not know about transgender people. Mm -hmm. You brought up one of them at the beginning of the interview, that it's not a choice. Yes. So what do you think the most important takeaway is from that particular video? I feel like collectively that video was just trying to show people that transgender individuals are really just like everyone else. We are all humans and we all deserve to be treated equally and respected for who we are. And I feel like we all have unique qualities, but once we can learn to embrace each other for our unique qualities, then we could kind of just unify as a society and mm -hmm. like accept 
accept our differences and move past it. And also, you know, I have faced discrimination in other ways as well. You know, for five years, I wasn't allowed to use the girls' bathroom at my elementary school. Wow. And they made me use the nurse bathroom which kind of didn't feel right to me at all. It made me feel isolated from the other kids and I didn't understand why I had to use this separate restroom. Yeah. And kids were like vomiting and bleeding in there. And you know, I would hold in my bladder and I'd have accidents almost every single day. And it got to the point where I actually snuck into the girls restroom one day and I got in trouble. I got caught and reprimanded by the school librarian and she threatened to call the principal's office. And I didn't realize why I was being treated differently. and. That was the first time I realized that transgender individuals aren't completely respected. Is there a personal obstacle that you have overcome and you're glad you've overcome it? Like personal, personal? Personal, personal. Okay, so I mean, I have depression and anxiety. It's gotten bad at some points that I have thoughts of little self-worth and I've had to sleep in my parents' bedroom pull my mattress up in there and they've been very protective of me. However, you know, when you get in that dark place, it's really, really difficult. And I had to just find inner strength to allow myself to move on and to allow myself to stay strong. So, yeah. I mean, over time I was able to get through it, but it was really, really difficult. And I hope I never have to, you know, experience that ever again. And I hope no one has to. I mean, I feel like we should just all be happy and we, should have a good time in life, but it's just so difficult sometimes. Was there anything that you did or said that helped you get through those times of depression and The biggest anxiety? thing for me was I had to tell myself that this will all clear up and that it will be better one day. If in that moment you feel like things are wrong, then you have to realize what's upsetting you and you have to create that change. You have to, you know, shift your life to make sure that you are finding happiness every single day. And, you know, I told myself if I just persevere and get through this little moment that I'm having right now, then I will find my happiness and I will find what I love to do and who I love to be around. Good, I love that. What stigmas are you trying to help the transgender community overcome? That's a deep question. Broad question. I feel like a lot of people are so confused about this bathroom thing and they make such a big deal out of it. And when we talk about the transgender community, it's often associated with this bathroom yep. issue and the bathroom bills. And I just don't understand it. I don't know why it's such a big deal and why people care what we're doing in the bathrooms. And it doesn't even make like logical sense. People think that we're sexual predators, but have those people even met a transgender person before? I feel like they have this false perception and they think that we're all like men in dresses and that's just not who we are. So I don't really understand what the big deal is. And you know, detrimental to my safety for me to be forced to use the men's restroom. Like think about that. If I had to go into the men's room, that would be uncomfortable and people would be like, what are you doing in here? So exactly. It, it, you put it perfectly. It actually just makes zero sense. Makes zero sense. I have to say that I guarantee some of you have probably gone into a public restroom and had no idea that you were in a stall next to somebody that was transgender. Mm -hmm. Like, end of story. So I just, I am in complete agreement with you. I do not understand why this is still something that is going on in 2017. It yeah. drives me bonkers. All right, Jazz, before we go, let's talk about I Am Jazz. Isn't that crazy that you have your own TV show with your name in it? That's unbelievable. Yeah, it's definitely, it's crazy. It's been a fun experience, and I'm glad that we could help other people by sharing my story. Yep. And season three is airing on June 27th and June 28th, and I'm super excited about it. Um, it's basically just about my life of, well, it's about my life Obviously. and my family's <laughs> life. But this season is kind of a transition from being a girl to becoming a woman. Ooh. And we talk about my sweet 16, my birthday, and also, you know, going on dates, things like that, okay. and the gender confirmation surgery. Awesome, okay, and then you also have a book. Yes, the paperback copy is coming out, and basically the book covers my life from when I was born basically to who I am today and I think it's a good book if you just want to learn what it's like to be transgender and it also has a positive message about being different that it's okay to be unique and just love yourself and embrace your amazing qualities so it's gonna be cool.
Okay, what's it called again? Uh, being Jazz, my life as a transgender teen. Transgender in parentheses. Amazing. Jazz, thank you so much for coming on the show. You are amazing. I love your story and I love what you're doing for the community. So thank Thanks. you so much. Guys, let me know in the comment section below your favorite part of this interview with Jazz. Also, we're going to put all of her socials in the copy below. So go subscribe to her channel and make sure that you are following her here, there, and everywhere. I'm not going to name <laughs> all of them because they're going to be down there. And as always, you can write me um, on Instagram and Twitter at Kirby Johnson. If you want to see somebody on the show and you have a specific subject that you would like us to cover, we try to get everybody's requests in. So just let us know in the comments and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Mwah. Mwah.